This is a day in the life of a structural design engineer in a buildings team that designs high rises all the way down to residential houses. Today I've got a couple of site inspections booked in and also need to do some design work. So let's get straight into it. Each morning I pretty much start things off the same. I get up, have a shower, get dressed and make myself some breakfast. After this, I head over to my desk and begin the work day. Now, most days I do actually head straight into the office, but today since I've got my first site inspection booked in for mid morning, it doesn't make sense for me to head in the other direction to the office and then drive backwards. So I'm gonna be working the first hour of my day from home. Anyways, one of the first things I do when I get to my desk each day is write a to-do list. To write this list, I use an app called Notability. And once my list is complete based off what I think I'll be doing today, I'll jump into my emails and Microsoft Teams to check if anything urgent has come through since yesterday. 90% of the time this does add something to my list and reshuffles the priority, although this morning it was only something minor, so I quickly added it and moved straight into the day. Now, the first task on my list is to finish off the design for a residential house that I've been working on for the past couple of days. At this point, all that's really left to do is finish off the modeling and space gas and size the last few steel members, so I should be able to finish off my set of markups before I need to leave and pass them on to the project drafter. In Australia, it's very common for the engineer to only do the structural design side of things and leave the drafting side to a dedicated draft person. So this allows me to only sketch things roughly in a PDF editor like Bluebeam, and then the drafter takes these markups and turns them into a nice Revit or AutoCAD drawing. In other parts of the world, engineers are expected to do both the design and drafting of their projects, so I thought this might be interesting to know about Australia. In any case, for me, up until this point, I've spent most of my time working on the layout of the structural members and making sure they meet the architectural intent. What this actually looks like is me sketching out the position of all the required beams, columns, walls, rafters and floor joists over the various architectural floor plans and then me going around and making sure that this suits the architectural layout. For example, this can be checking things like whether my members will fit within the floor space or that if all my columns are hidden within walls. Besides this, I've also worked on completing the slab and footing plans and making sure that these are appropriate given the site geotechnical report and also completed the bracing design. As this particular project is still in its early stages, we only need to send out the general arrangement plans. So after I've finished this layout, I have a bit of time up my sleeve before I need to start compiling all the details to get this job construction ready. Also, since we're talking about design work and problem solving, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, because they can really come in handy. If you haven't heard of Brilliant, it's one of the top online learning platforms for STEM. They've got thousands of interactive lessons across topics like math, computer science, AI, and even engineering fundamentals. What makes Brilliant stand out is how hands-on it is. Every lesson is built around interactive problem solving, and instead of just watching someone explain concepts, you're actually working through them yourself. One topic in particular I think engineers and students should really check out is their programming courses. These courses start from the very basics and quickly move into practical topics. From learning Python to developing an intuition for computer logic, these courses will give you real hands-on experience and teach you a new way to solve repetitive problems. If you want to give Brilliant a try, be sure to use my link in the description. And if you do use my link, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I do have a site inspection I need to get to this morning. So it's time for me to stop working on this project, pack my bag and get on my way. I'm going to be working from the office after this inspection. And in the office, I pretty much have a full setup minus my laptop. So I really only need to take a couple of things with me. That'll be my big Dell work computer, my trusty 11 inch iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, and lastly, my calculator. And of course, because I'm gonna be heading to site, I'll also need my steel cap boots, hard hat, tape measure, safety glasses, and a high vis vest but this stuff is already in my car. For this first inspection, I'm gonna be heading out to a high rise project to look at some columns and walls. This side is a pretty busy one with not a lot of parking, so I do have to walk a bit to get there. As soon as I arrive, I head straight up to the elements I'm inspecting. When I get there, the first thing I do is have a general look over the element and see if anything is a big red flag straight away. If nothing major looks to be missing, the next thing I do is pull out the drawings and study what's actually been specified. Generally speaking though, for a column and wall inspection, I need to check things like the arrangement and size of vertical, horizontal, and leg reinforcement bars, 
the dimensions if it's the column, and also the cover to the formwork. During these inspections, I really try to be as thorough as possible because if something doesn't meet the drawings and gets built over, it can cause massive issues later on. After going through everything, I noted down a couple of small items for the builder to tidy up, but overall things were looking good. As this inspection was a pretty quick one, I was keen to see how other parts of the project were progressing, so I had a bit of a look over the other slabs, then inside the core walls, and also went down to the lower floors to see how the fit outs were going. On projects of this size, it's cool to see how all the moving parts are coming together as the building goes up, so if I have the time, it's a good opportunity to check these sorts of things out. Anyway, with the inspection complete, it's time to move on and head into the office. Once I get settled at my desk, it's back to the to-do list, and this time I need to complete a shop drawing review on an industrial project I designed. A shop drawing review is basically just reviewing the model and drawings that a steel fabricator will receive. These drawings and models are often created by the fabricator's in-house drafting team or a subcontractor of the steel fabricator. In any case, the shop drawer's model and drawings have been created based off the model and design drawings we sent them, and in this task we are just double checking that they've interpreted our design correctly and making any final changes before the steel items get fabricated. As a design engineer, this is your last chance to check that things are going to be made the same way that you have designed them, so it's really important to make sure that the shop drawer has assigned the right connections to the right members and hasn't missed anything crucial. Although Although this may seem like a straightforward process of just tick and flicking, it can be a costly one because anything that needs to change after this point is a big pain for everyone. These guys have done a really good job as I don't have a lot of comments and that's great for me because it's time for some lunch. Today's lunch isn't anything special and I'm just going to be eating some leftovers. After a quick bite to eat, I now need to get some detailed design done on another industrial project I'm working on before I head off to site again. During this task, I need to take the member forces out of the analysis program, which in my case is SpaceCast, and then input these results into RAM connection, which I'm using to design the connections. This process typically involves finding the worst combination of forces from the analysis model, and then just adjusting the geometry of the connection until you can make it work. Although in some cases it doesn't matter how much you try and beef up the connection, it just won't work. In these cases it's very likely you'll need to choose a bigger member size to relieve some of that stress on that connection. Anyhow, after you've found something that works, you typically need to sketch it up so it can be added to the detail sheet and then move on to the next connection. Depending on how complex your project is and how many unique connections you have, this can be quite a time consuming task. In my case, I don't have too many unique connections as this building is pretty regular, so I only need to model a few connections. After finishing off these connections, it's time for me to pack up and make my way to my other inspection. This inspection is for an industrial building and today I'll be looking at the steel roof framing. I also recently worked out how to get 3D models on my iPad, so I'll be using this to double check anything that's not clear. During a steel roof framing inspection, I'm making sure that all the steel members are in position and are the same size that was specified. I'm also making sure that all the connections have been installed as per our details. As I move around the warehouse, I like to use my iPad to highlight each of the members on the drawing to make sure nothing is missing. From my experience, it's not usually a member that's missing, but it's a bolt or something small, which totally makes sense. If a beam or a brace was lying on the floor, you'd definitely notice that, but if one out of the four bolts were not installed, you could easily miss that. So once I've checked off every member, the rest of my time is spent on the connections. If anything is missing or not complete, I then talk to the site supervisor and include it in my report. Overall, there were still a few things that needed fixing or completing, but otherwise things were looking good. At this point, I'm finished the inspection, and I'm going to head home to write the report for this inspection, and also my one from earlier today. Writing up these reports isn't too big of a job, so I'm keen to complete them before I finish up. Once I finish these, I then log off for the day and get changed for some fun. I recently started playing golf, and tonight I'm going to go to the driving range. For anyone that's tried to hit a golf ball before, you would know how difficult it is. So while it can be fun, it's also quite challenging. My whole technique comes from self-teaching through YouTube videos, so please try not to focus on that if you actually know how to swing a golf club properly. My form is definitely not the best, but sometimes it just works, and well, sometimes it doesn't. Either way, it's a bit of fun, and after this I head home for some dinner. Today, after being out on the road so much and also hitting a bunch of golf balls, I'm just going to take it easy and watch some TV and go to sleep early. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.